return for 10 yards. However, he also had a kick six that went for 109 yards. We're going to need a fire extinguisher when Agnew returns kicks because he's simply burning it up on the field with amazing runs. Jamal Agnew is your McKeever Clinic special teams player of the game. In 1921, U.S. Marine Corps surgeon Dr. Robert McKeever established the first urologic practice in Florida, the McKeever Clinic. I'm Dr. West. 100 years later, we continue to carry on his life's work in providing complete urologic care in Jacksonville. We have 13 board-certified urologists with many areas of expertise to provide the highest level of care for both men and women. Visit McKeeverClinic.com to learn more about how we can help. McKeever Clinic, innovators in urologic care since 1921. This 1010XL 92.5 FM hour is powered by Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904-600-4000. That's 904-600-4000. We heard your cries, Guggen Nation, but too much of a good thing is bad for your health. So we're only doing this once a week. Buckle up, baby. It's time for ETN. Brought to you by All Pro Roofing on 1010XL. Well, we have an interesting development here. Beef no, we has not. said that he wants the flogging Molly tickets himself. He's hung up on today's Well, he Guggen hung up judge. on the Guggen Judge. So he will, and before. we're going to make him now because it's his most hated thing he in the world. He hates it. In fact, we can just a Guggen can call, but now we're going to make Beef Judge ETN. This is great. We're going to send him down a spiral of despair. He hated this it. This led to Beef leaving the radio station at He one actually point. needed. I'm not doing it. <laughs> he Flat actually, out. He actually I'll needed. I'll play the music again and we'll go to the. Flipping break. He actually needed That's counseling. Ninety questions. second ETN. Come on. I mean, he uh, needed counseling at one point. Yeah. I'm not doing it. I don't know why you can't just I will, ask questions. I will fire a vulgarity on the air. No, what don't do that. Mean? I'll do it. We'll give away the tickets. You judge. Let's yeah. go. Round one. This here we go. Is, this is going to be the most throwaway. Come on, B. Round one. Winner Dan. Dan. On we go. No, here we go. <laughs> Round Question one. First. Yes, Let sir. me win it first. Round one. Grade the trade. Okay. Grade the trade. I like that. That's good. Uh, the trade is a C. It's a C because you made the most out of a, a, a bad situation, out of a mistake. And often your mistakes you get nothing out of but a slap in the face. So uh, to get a third-round uh, pick for C.J. Henderson, a guy who clearly in some ways pouted, in other ways played his way out of town. I, again, the history of the NFL doesn't end well when coaches have to pay a visit to your house the first week of training camp to, I don't know, talk you into coming and playing. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I mean, the trade, in my opinion, is an epic fail. I said that, so it has to be an F. I mean, uh, and because of this, because we just gave away another first-round pick, another top-ten pick uh, for literally nothing, for a bag of beans. And, and, and it frustrates me to no end that this continues even on into the new regime. This cannot happen. These are the types of things that kill a franchise. This is why we had the worst record uh, 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 in the in the – 2010s, and it's why we we continue to struggle as as a football franchise. So, um, hopefully, going forward, this regime won't do that. But the for me, because you had to get rid of a number, the number nine pick overall, it's an F. Wrong button. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my bell. I lost my bell. Oh, yeah. Round two. Well, who won, Beef? Uh, round one because uh, he, he bought me the uh, Zach to the Rack shirt. That one goes to Dan. Yeah! Well, that's interesting because what Dan did was grade the draft pick. He didn't uh-huh. grade the trade. You're uh-huh. grading the draft pick. No one asked See? you for your this follow-up. Is well, this, is why, this is what sends Beef well, over the edge. This is why doing got, us a favor right now. This is now. why we got rid of him as a judge. He's doing I mean, us a favor ridiculous. right now. Try it. I asked Dan to judge the trade. He judged the draft pick. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's true. Go ahead, Beef. Hey, Ola. Round two. Not to mention <laughs> He start, beef's starting Barely, to sweat a little bit. Round two. Beef's eating his last daily sub, I'll tell you that much. Well, I mean, there's, there's many more rounds, Jeff. <laughs> there's a pattern here. <laughs> Pick up on it. Uh, round uh, two. Round two last night. Uh, Cowboys, easy work. your work-ing. fault, Coogans. Round, uh, Cowboys, easy work. 150%. I blame Molly. Uh, <laughs> I would like to have some. Uh, oh, no. Going MDMA on us. <laughs> Make this go smoother for me. Uh, it's Hannah time, by the way. I'm over the loss. Oh, yes. wow. Oh, just stunningly professional this morning in a yellow ensemble. I, just been a real bright spot to my day after years of, of, of vast wasteland of no Hannah time in the mornings. It's nice to have her back. A little sunshine on your shoulder. Oh, 
just wonderful. And it's beautiful because it's a crush that Mrs. P lets me get away with. Go find one of those, Googans. Go ahead. That's a win, man. Yeah, when your wife says, damn, she's older than me. Okay. All right, honey. Uh, last night. I love you, honey. I know you're just getting to work. Last night, the uh, Cowboys made pretty easy work of the Eagles last night. Uh, you know, it seems like they're the class of the NFC East. But where are they in the uh, general hierarchy of the NFL? Are they better? I mean, they look better than we expected. Uh, the Cowboys look to me like the premier team in the NFC East who will probably go on the road in the playoffs but be a dangerous out is, is how I would characterize the Dallas Cowboys. I don't think they're of the Rams, Bucks ilk, but I think they are a team that could give you some, some troubles in the, in the postseason because of that high-powered offense, but it's, we got a long way to go. Um, I would put them a little higher than that. I, I do. I, I think they, I mean, they lost 31, 29 at Tampa to start the year. They went on the road. That's kind of like their Bama Florida score. They went to this chargers team who every year you want to put in the super bowl, beat them on the road. And last night just whacked the Eagles. One thing is for sure, completely different team with Dak Prescott. I mean, they're, they're going to run away with the East in my mind. They look by far like the best team. And I don't know if we thought that, um, w- when the season began, but they, they got the undefeated Panthers coming to town, and oh. you're going to have to work that offense against C.J. Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by virtue of numerous Cuban subs. Uh-huh. <laughs> Winner, Jeff. Thank you. Round three. Round three. <laughs> Maybe you oh, forgot no. about the bowl bowl. It's got a text. Oh, no. Oh, no. Speaking of. Uh, time's over. X day a time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I joked about the Molly, and speaking of guys who have had many drug are, issues in the past, uh, Josh Gordon's back, guys. Uh, yesterday, the uh, Chiefs are adding the newly reinstated Josh Gordon to their practice squad. Uh, is, can you expect anything out of a guy who hasn't really done anything in this many years? No, gosh, no. Well, see, they added, also added Justin Blackman and Matt Jones, for Pete's sake. Oh, Why don't you go get R.J. Sauer and oh, give him no. another ride in the rodeo? No, well, Josh Gordon has been completely unreliable for years. It's been a long time since Josh Gordon was flashing as one of the best receivers in football. And he's had a number of opportunities. He continues to find his way back out of the league. Now, he's going to be saved by the no <laughs> by the marijuana being off of the band list, or at least the way it's tested for. Um, you know, maybe he can stick around, but as far as making an impact, I guess we'll find out. He's got a pretty good palette there to try yeah. his paints on in Kansas City. I um I just gotta I, I'm just rooting for Josh Gordon. If he if football helps him, good. If football hurts him, he shouldn't play anymore. I, I he's had so many chances. How how many shots has Josh Gordon had? Oh my had? gosh, just like five or six. Yeah, I mean like, I just so I I, I, I God bless him, man. I, I I just hope he can find a role. Uh, and, and like I said, if, if if football is his best bet, being around that structure helps him. But it doesn't seem like it does. Uh, then I'm rooting for him. You know, I, I I don't know what to say about Josh Gordon anymore. Except you know, addiction is a is a brutal, painful thing to watch for for many for all of us. Uh, you once brought me a lovely. 8 by 10 glossy photo of Derrick Rose. I did. It's beautiful, and I appreciated the you, gesture. Yes. Winner Dan. Thank you. That's when he was a round role. four. That's when he was a reigning MVP, too. That was, it's true. That wasn't just a throwaway on sale. Yeah. Deal. It's that, now it's not completely worthless, but it's I still. Say, I still. Get, but back I still then, I had to pony up. Yeah. Give the guy yeah. a point for a nick. Yeah. The guy, you know why? <laughs> it, it kept uh, my guys from overpaying and signing him. Yeah. <laughs> Also true. <laughs> Round four. Uh, I mean, yesterday. When you, when you tally this up anywhere near the price of a printer repair, let me know. Oh. <laughs> I mean, he ruins again. It. He ruins it. <laughs> this guy, the bitterness. I, know. I mean, what am I? I'm sitting right. getting these little tit for tat, glossy photos. Yeah. I make an impact on yeah. family you know, finance. Sometimes, sometimes it's the thought yeah. that counts. Patience is a virtue, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> Round four. Uh, a pair of embattled head football coaches here in the Sunshine State they both still have Bull Bull in the bag. Uh, made impassioned uh, statements yesterday. Yes, uh, Mike Norvell. Yes, he did. And Manny Diaz. Mm-hmm. Uh, Manny Diaz responding to criticism from Kirk Herbstreit about the university's commitment to football. Mike Norvell just trying to uh, keep any kind of you know light going at zero and four. Yeah. So, which one of those guys gave you the most hope that they could turn their program around, or did either? That's a good question. So which guy would I lean towards yeah. as having future success? Which of those guys who both gave very impassioned pleas yesterday inspired you, if right. either did? 
Neither of those speeches inspired me. And I'll give a slight tip towards Tallahassee. And here's why. He's in his second year. Diaz is in his third year. And I I think Miami is not going to be a very good program. Both of them have one small piece of hope in their back pocket, and that is they're in the ACC, which looks to be an epic disaster this year. And so maybe they can win some games that they normally wouldn't win. So I would slight lean towards Norvell, but I, I'm not, I don't think either one is a long-term answer. What was the question exactly, Beef? Which one? Which one of those two guys, Manny Diaz, Mike Norvell yesterday, who were both very fiery uh, defending their programs, kind of gave you the most hope that they, they can turn it around? C. None of the above? None of the above, man. Give me a – no. Mike Norvell is – this is, is – he's – I mean, this guy's Daryl Mudra, man. This guy's a footnote in FSU history. There's only a couple of options that it can work out for Mike Norvell, and they're all terrible. One is he's taken the ship on a sandbar, and they can't afford to pay a tugboat to pull him off for another two years. So he's just going to sit there as the captain, you know, sitting on a sandbar with his ship full of, you know, sailors doing nothing. Red ships of Spain. Or, or he's just going to drive the ship – Right into an iceberg, and it's going to sink to the bottom of the ocean. They're 0-4. I mean, if you're going to dress this up any way other than abject, total, way in over your head failure, then I can't help you. But I'm not going to back Manny Diaz. He's just the latest in a line of, uh, you know, coaches in Miami who promise a return and can't deliver. Uh, Beef, before you you, uh, answer the question, I would just like to invoke, if possible, Robert's Rules of Order on the time dancer that that was clearly – well over the uh, well, 30 seconds. Dan, once upon a time, in a fit of frustration, I kicked a hole in the paper drawer on the <laughs> printer across the street at 9090 Hogan Road. You did. And I was in some hot water. I was going to have to pay for out of pocket. Yeah. Jeff. Uh-huh. Jeff paid for it. He stepped up. Like a hero. Well, I do. Winner, Jeff. Right. Round five. FSU uh, and lastly, boosters, you wish you had me on your side. Lastly, I'm just going to read you a uh, a. a bl- not go fund me? Have we had one of those yet in sports? It's time for a go, like a GoFundMe to, to, to make a change at coach or somewhere, right? Uh-huh. These GoFundMe's have hit everywhere. FSU fans, you need to start a GoFundMe. See if you can't go find a coach buyout somewhere. GoFundMe. Oh, uh, I'll just read you a blip from an article, and I'll, I'll let you react, okay? okay? Mm-hmm. Whether you think uh, this is a great idea or okay. a horrific Robert's idea or somewhere in between. Uh, this is from MLB.com's Adam Barry. Yes. A.B. Quote. The Bear Man. While expressing club officials' desire to be very considerate about keeping their focus on the field, Rays president Matt Silverman revealed the team will soon be, quote, more visible and more vocal regarding its sister city uh, plan to split future seasons between the Tampa Bay area and Montreal. Um, well, what do you mean? It's, it's pretty simple. Hello, Montreal. And uh, Tampa doesn't deserve their baseball team anymore. I mean, they got a team that was in the World Series last year. They're a dominant presence. I mean, they somehow... Never get they overshadow the two of the behemoths in the game, the Yankees and Red Sox, and yet their loser fan base can't go across the bay. Oh, uh, well, let me ask you this: um, You're going to take that five-hour flight north to Montreal because that's where your games are going now, and it's on you, you whiny, sniveling, ungrateful baseball twerps. There are hotbed baseball markets in this country that would kill for the success that Tampa had and they'd be sold out every day. So, Montreal, enjoy your half season for another couple years, Tampa. And then rightfully, the team will completely leave and be in Montreal full-time. Eve, can you read the comment again, please? The uh, quote again that's from uh, your favorite guy, Dan, Adam Barry at MLB.com. Okay. It says, uh, while expressing club officials' desire to be, quote, very considerate, about keeping their focus on the field. Rays president Matt Silverman revealed that the team will soon be, quote, more visible and more vocal regarding its sister city plan to split future seasons between the Tampa Bay area and Montreal. The only mistake that the Rays organization is making is even doing Tampa a semi-solid of trying to stay there for half the year. Don't bother. Just go. Pack up and go. Go go somewhere where you're appreciated. They played a critical game, a critical series with the Boston Red Sox this summer, recently. Tampa, who's been to the postseason four years in a row, four years in a row, and drew 5,000 fans. And I know what the Tampa fans say. If the team was in Tampa, we would all go. Uh, poppycock. I'm sorry. 
Go, leave, save your franchise. You deserve much, much better. I'm an old fan guy. I love the fans. In this case, got to go with the team. Thank you very much. And Play lastly, the music. That's a winner lastly, for me. Uh, Play winner, the music. Winner, Andrew Nola. What has happened? The Whirly Bird. The Whirly Bird is the winner today. Yeah. There's no win there. It's the buzzword is Whirly Bird. Oh, it's called happened. a Whirly Bird. I know what happened. If you had really won, he would have gladly said Winter Dan. But because I was afraid of you, uh-huh. the motorboat you once gave him. It did. It did. It was kind of erotic. I mean, he's afraid the gift, the gift train will run out. I mean, we heard what happened. It's called a Whirly Bird. And I don't t-shirts. think I ever got the, mo- the Bull Bowl ch- point. What, what chance did I have? What happened to the Bull Bowl point? <laughs> you were begging for the Bull Bowl point. I was begging for the Bull Bowl point. You were, you were going hard for the Bull Bowl point. one of the more point. creative gifts ever. Uh, do we have tickets to give away? We do. We're going to go to uh, St. Aug this weekend. We're going to flog Molly. Yeah, we're going to do this for you, Guggins. But her. if you screw up again, you know, you call in and say, I'm the guest Guggen judge, and then you hang up like right before we pop on the air. I don't have time to wait for you. We got things to do. We got places to go. We got concepts and rationalizations to get to. So you better call right now, 641 1010, and you go see Flogging Molly. That's right. Or Molly Flogging. I don't care. Both. It's also, all coming an up next, right here on the drill. The drill on 1010XL. From the studios of Republic Services, we'll handle it.